welcome to Simon Weaver, who's sitting with me today. How are you feeling today for the big match against Boston? Yeah, yeah looking forward to it. Hope, hopefully keep the run uh, going. Superb. Last time we spoke, it was before the Hastings replay. We all know what happened. But one of the pleasing things that a lot of people have commented on is the fact there seems to be no hangover from that game. The team haven't seemed to have stuttered. How pleased have you been with that? I've been delighted with that. I think um, it's very emotional after the game. Uh, but the the players have responded magnificently and it's credit to them, to them and their, their spirit that they've generated in the changing room that they've got uh, great ability to bounce back and to be honest, they've not just bounced back, they've gone from strength to strength. You added um, some real impact players, Dominic Knowles, Michael Woods. How pleased have you been with their contribution uh, straight off and do you think that your judge of player is getting better as obviously you've had more time in the job? I think as I've had more time in the job, we've uh, we've progressed as a team, as a football club. So there's been, um, and also in terms of my contact book, I've I've got people in there that I can trust, you know, and uh, have similar views on players as mine, because everyone has opinions of football, and um, and everyone shares different di- different views on players. But now I've got a contact list where I can go, yep, yeah, he knows what I want. He's he knows the type of player that I need at the minute, and we wanted to add to the attacking. Um, element of our, our play and our squad and, and, and Nolsey and Woodsy have both come in and, and made immediate impacts and, and we needed to just add to a competition for places and, and they've certainly done that Tom Platt third loan spell with the club can we kidnap him keep him this time? Yeah, I think that's a good idea this time uh, if he won't stay longer till the end of the season but uh, you know, he's made a, a big impact every time he's been with us he's a likeable guy you know, really nice demeanour about him and uh, what's more important is that on the pitch he, he can be pretty deadly for us as well he's got a good, good, great goal ratio for us and we can get him in attacking areas of the pitch uh, with the with the complement uh, of midfielders around him and uh, complement his game and you know, and if we can get him into that last third and around the D, he's got a great strike, and also attacking corners as well. He's got a good strike rate for us as well. So, his fit is an athlete. He can get up and down the park, and and he joins him with, with um, the kind of atmosphere we've got in the, that changing room. Any plans? I mean, obviously you've strengthened the midfield, you've strengthened the uh, forward line. Any plans for the defence? Are you happy, obviously, with Alan, Shane, Matt, Dave, Dwayne? I think the the most important area of the team in terms of for being consistent with your selections is the back the back four and the keeper. And I think they've been very consistent and um, very reliable. Uh, they all like the ball as well, so they can all pl- develop play from from the goalkeeper going forward. Uh, we look very relaxed on on. Uh, on Saturday on the ball, we split at the back and we play. That's the that's our philosophy of developing play. Um, now, it's it's not easy, you know. If you want to add defenders, you're not going to be um, making it a happy squad. If people if people newcomers sign and then sit up in the stand. Now we have no plans in the immediate future. That's for sure. For the dropping players like uh, Alan White and Shane Killick, and they've, they've been superb, so why should I want to change it? I'll take you back in time for a bit now, Simon, back to 2009 when you first came into the club. Um, obviously, Neil asked me before you built a bit of a legacy, but then left. The players had gone to various other clubs as well. How difficult was it for you to sort of come into that situation, new manager, no squad, and have to build it up so quickly? Oh, it was very difficult indeed. Um, I just didn't didn't have the contacts in those days. My contacts were, were players um, at the clubs I played with and for, um, and I had a great list of players going into the chairman at the time that I thought may you know may be interested in coming to play for me, uh, but we just couldn't afford them at the time. And you know we had nine or ten footballs in a bag, and, and that was your lot at the time. And um, it, it, it had been a fantastic club. But it was in a, a troubled time. Um, credit to Neil Aspin, he's done a great job. But he he, he wanted to move move on, um, and he I'm sure he he knew what he was in for if it had stayed in the job. It was going to be a problematic season, no matter if you're experienced or inexperienced. But problems the but the problems were I'm sure exacerbated by having an inexperienced manager at that time without the contacts um, of the lower levels. Uh, I think we lined up against Corby with just three players of Conference North experience. So we were on a hide into nothing in a very competitive league. 
uh, and no amount of training or management uh, I think at the time could have improved it much anyway um, looking back yeah the things that I've learned there's no no doubt about it like in any job the more you have time in that job you're going to learn from experiences and I hope I have, I have done and uh, I hope I've, I've progressed along the way if you could go back and give yourself one piece of advice now knowing what you know at this point in time to what you knew or what you didn't know in 2009 what would you say would be that main focal piece of advice I think possibly to be philosophical uh, about what our capabil uh, capabilities were at the time um, and that I've become more relaxed uh, and into the job and uh, perhaps at the time it was I was very passionate and I still am but the frustrations were pouring out on me um, because of our capabilities capability as a squad you know I think it was always going to be very very difficult and it may be if I'd have been a little bit more philosophical at the time it may have given up a slightly more relaxed air and, and given those uh, young players a um, bit more chance of, of succeeding um, yeah perhaps that perhaps that's the the answer to that one I want to go on about um, your dad chairman um, of the club it's obviously an area that we can't escape from and yeah, one yeah. that has been highlighted many times but obviously I want to get your reaction on a few things um, do you think it's hard to be the chairman's son um, do you think that people treat you differently because of the relationship that's obviously there father son chairman manager um, well I'm not an arrogant guy who, who just buries his head in the sand and thinks right uh, I don't give a stuff what uh, people in the game think you know obviously I aspire to to uh, build a good career in the game, you know, on the management side. Um, and so obviously I thought, well, will this hold me back? And obviously people are going to perceive it at the times, oh, well, he'll stay in a job uh, for life if he wants, you know, because of that. And I was seeing it from the other end thinking, well, will people think, well, he just wants to cush your life and he's happy to, to just stay put and just, uh, just stay there for life now. Um, I love it at Harrogate Town. I've got more to prove because but as the chairman I understand that but I think as time's gone on now I think people are judging me as a manager solely um, there's other there's building um, relationships aren't there you know in, in, in other industries where it's father son and it's quite unique in football I think Frank Lampard at the top top level had it with his dad and he was he suffered a lot of abuse until he, until he uh, moved on mm -hmm. uh, and some people find it convenient I'm sure to think right well he's there just because of his dad I think we made uh, inroads this year. I think we made great progress from uh, the end of last season with the six-game unbeaten run, and with the injuries we had, that was an achievement at the time. And we built the squad up. The atmosphere is good. I don't think really people are too bothered about that now, and they know I'm hungry to do well, and uh, and that's that. Do you feel you get treated differently by other managers because of the relationship at the club with your dad being the man? Um, no, not at all. I, I think because I played for a number of clubs, and I was always searching. And, I suppose I was quite difficult to manage in some respects because if I was out the team, I was banging on the uh, manager's door saying I want to know the reason why, and and I'm off, you know. And perhaps I look back and I think, oh yeah, maybe being a little bit hard work and and headstrong because I wanted to get further and I wanted to search and and, and realise my ambitions. And um, now because of that, though, I think people in the game know how hungry I am, you know, and I'm popping up everywhere. And, uh, at reserve games and development games, under 18 games, and that's because I've got a thirst and hunger to do well. Now, they know I'm not that kind of a lad that just wants to um, be happy and, and just sit where I am and uh, and uh, pick up a wage, and that's it. You know, I've I've got more about me than that, and uh, perhaps the only people who know me um, will understand that. And fortunately, I know a lot of people in the game. So basically, you're not here just for a cushy number at all. You're here to do no. that work. No, not at all. You know, I want to look back and uh, I've got a brand new baby daughter, and I wanted to be proud of uh, of someone who aspires to do well. Yeah. We've taken on a more attacking role. It seems on the pitch, four three three, a lot more dynamic fluidity in the way we're passing now. Is that something that you and John have strived for? Yeah, we hear Mark players in the summer. You know, when, when you spend time in the job and. As said before, alluded to before, you you build up good relationships in the game, and and then you have a greater awareness of of the players that could fit into your type of play, your style of play, and this is what we've wanted from day one. But bit by bit, we've we've got in there and got good players on board, and they can certainly take instructions on board, and, and they can go out and play with freedom. 
the pitch isn't really helping us too much to play with that kind of passing style. But um, yeah, we, we've certainly developed on the pitch in terms of the way we develop play and it's been a joy to watch at times. What do you tell the players before the, the match with the pitch at home? How do you get them to sort of ignore the fact that it's not the best pitch, we know that, we know there's been a lot of work done and you know it's been very well documented, the problems that we've had, but what do you personally say to the players in that change room before the match? Well, after hypnotising them, I um, I generally just put them under and, and just say that we're, we're playing on Wembley surface outside and, and they seem to go into a trance and then uh, walk out and they're very confident. Now, but seriously, I, I think we've all played on pitches you and I have probably played on pitches under 10s, under 11s, under 12s, and as the, the rest of our players have, and um, and they've all been full of mud. And you come in on a Sunday afternoon, and you've loved it, and I just want them to enjoy the football, no matter what surface to play on. And I'll take the blame if if we're not uh, playing winning football because it's um, not the pitch that we want. But we're going to stick to our style of play, and that's that's playing that's playing passing football. One last question on the pitch. Um, will there be further work done at the end of the season? Definitely, straight after the last game of the season, we're looking to get on it, or well, the club are and the contractors are, and, uh, and put right a few wrongs. And it's not necessarily wrongs, just put right things that you know we ran out of time to do in the summer, and that's uh, reinforcing the drainage, getting the sand slit in down the, down the whole length of the pitch. And, and that will enable the water, surface water to run off and not get stuck in into the holes in the pitch and it's, um, it holds water so easily at the minute. It's beaten up as a pitch, you know, we've tried to re-turf it, tried to throw everything at it, but it's very, very difficult. I'm not an expert in, in that area of the, of the game, unfortunately, but um, we've got good people who want to uh, do us a favour now and want to improve things for us and we need the pitch to be right to uh, keep hold of these boys. Nice lead on there. Uh, speaking of keeping hold of players, we've obviously had recent um, media speculation, Wolves, Doncaster, uh, Newcastle United, all after our young goalkeeper, Craig. Yeah. How difficult is that for you to manage in the respect of keeping Craig's feet on the floor and also, you know, we have a small club, very big names being mentioned. How um, I suppose your phone's been going mental from all the, the agents that are wanting to cut in, so to speak. How do you deal with that? I think that the main thing is um, I've got to learn from what's perhaps happened to me and several uh, players when we when I was younger in the fact that if you're not up front players can then turn around and say I remember that time back in 2013 when you blocked me move or you weren't honest with me and I've had a word with Craig about every phone call I've had um, we've actually only had genuine interest from one club I'm sure other clubs have been watching there was a club that rang up about him last week didn't make a formal offer or anything but showed that you know they wanted to start the ball rolling and, and that they were very impressed with what they'd seen. Which is understandable, he's a terrific young goalkeeper and they're a rare breed these days, good English young goalkeepers. And if I was from a, a higher league club, then I'd definitely have my sights set on him. But uh, we don't want to put too much pressure on him. You know, He's, he's a great young lad, he's happy here. Um, we're happy whilst he stays here. But as long as he, you know, he knows that we're not denying him anything, then um, we'll, we'll keep a happy player on board for as long as he wants to be. Just finish um, the interview, Sam. I want to speak about you. Um, over the last sort of, like, let's say, three years, what do you feel that you've learned the most? What areas would you like to develop in, and what do you see your future being with the recent speculation of yourself and the manager's position at Lincoln City? Well, I don't know too much about that, other than a few people I used to be in contact with, obviously, when I was at Lincoln City, and they said, "Oh, you know, what, what, is there any truth behind you know rumours?" And I said, "Well, not from my end, there isn't. You know, I've just..." continuing here and I love it here and I want to get us in the um, promotion mix and, and see where we can go. I've got to build up a track record if I'm honest and uh, after a very difficult first few years you know building it up from basically um, basically nothing you know to start with uh, and, and then last year you know second year we did pretty well uh, and showed great progress a 10 match unbeaten run finishing mid table last year was difficult with the injuries 9 or 10 out at times um, and so but after all that I think I've squeezed in a lot of experience into 3 years and so it'll hopefully help me this year and hopefully help me with the, in the years to come and where where I want to go you know and every every person in football wants to aspire to go as high as they possibly can um, but I think I've improved in terms of 
I'd like to think anyway in terms of the man management, in terms of the coaching side, um, in terms of how it's not just saying right we want to play 4-3-3, it's how to develop that in terms of the way you coach and so players have clear thoughts instead of grey areas where they think well, I'm not sure what he wants and also and also the contact book, you know, that's massive now. Um, I said before, I'm at every match going, so that I possibly can get to anyway. And so you've got to be seen at games. Um, consistently want to prove my hunger. So we've got an exclusive here. No recent, no sudden departures to Lincoln City at the moment. No, no, no. It's um, this is about um, building for me, build, building up a track record and making it my mark and my stamp on Harrogate Town. Uh, and proving myself, I've got a lot to prove. Uh, perhaps in some in some minds even more so because I've got family here. Um, but I will I'll prove my attitude day in day out. Um, I've got aspirations like everyone else. Simon, it's been a pleasure to talk to you. I'll let you get get ready for the uh, Boston United match tonight. Thanks. Looking Thank forward to it. Cheers.